Coming up on show 534, it's a Saturday special interview talking to Jill Noel about how to make sense of big data. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, weekend edition, Saturday the 20th of July today. My name is Martin Lee. I'm going through every EV story during the week to save you time and bring you the news of the last 24 hours in a bite-sized chunk. At the weekends, though, I love to bring you interviews with those people who are doing some heavy thinking around EVs. And, of course, that does incorporate the energy community as well. Talking to Jill Noel today, someone who has a passion project. That always sounds like it's a little hobby that someone does in their spare time, but this is such a good idea, and it is taking up a lot of Jill's time, but it's a really valuable research uh, resource. It's called EV Clicks, and you can go online and find it. You can follow on Twitter, EV Clicks. It's a way of crowdsourcing pictures of EVs. People submit a picture that they've taken and in doing so, hand over the rights to use that picture for anyone really, community groups, charities, if you're doing a presentation for work. As you know, you can't just rip off pictures of the internet and use them for commercial purposes because whoever took them would like a very large check, please, for you doing that. So it's a it's a way of building a resource, which means that when somebody wants to find... Some pictures of an EV, and let's face it, we've all seen those articles on mainstream websites of probably uh, a small EV from 10 or 15 years ago charging on a weird connector just because that's the one they had in their archive. Let's update those, and let's all send pictures in of our own electric cars and tell people that they're more than happy to use those to show contemporary current pictures of EVs. But also, in her work life, Jill makes sense of really big data. And when I talk about big data, I'm talking about knowing so much about what the electricity grid in this country does on a national scale. How do you support the future of smart electricity systems in that? Yes, Jill is a bit of a genius when it comes to that, so I won't pretend to understand anything. I'll just ask the stupid questions. And from Fully Charged Live a couple of weeks ago where we caught up, it's my honour to welcome to the podcast Jill Noel. On a mezzanine level right now, looking down upon a stage, which is kind of loud, so if you can hear that that noise in the background, hopefully not too much. We're above that right now, looking down on everyone, and I'm with Jill, who I know you from EV Clicks, which is a project to crowdsource pictures of EVs. Have I some firstly welcome Jill? Thanks very much, Martin. Delighted to meet you. Have good to finally meet. This whole thing has been like, oh my goodness, I finally met you. Is that a good summary of what EV Clicks is all about? And if not, can you correct me? It's a great summary, Martin. EV Clicks, I set it up in uh, February this year. For the work that I do, I'm often trying to, to find true to life images of electric vehicles. So I put a, a call out through um, at EV Clicks on Twitter that I set up saying, come on, guys. Please send me your lovely, lovely EV or electric vehicle related images. I put those onto a website and it's a free open source library. The images really are for use by schools, by communities, project work, small businesses even. And it's all in aid of supporting you know, the, the move to electric vehicles. People who are listening might not realise it's really important to have a resource of copyright free because there's now just to go into it a little bit there's technology out there now there's a big industry forming of people will digitally fingerprint a photo and if someone else has used it on their social media on their website the original person who took that photo can come along and say i you know i would like payment for that and it can be 50 pounds or it can be you know give me 150 pounds or and i won't sue you and if you're a business and you've ripped it off the internet then good luck it can be thousands it's so important for the community to have this central resource of pictures that everyone's taken and they've said, use it for free. Yeah, and I'm delighted really at the, the response I've had. You know, the likes of Robert Llewellyn have sent images in, Dan Caesar, you, you know, some fantastic images from um, Weeby, who's done the amazing road trip from the Netherlands uh, across Australia. So I'm really pleased. Um, but, re- but actually, what I'm most pleased about, Martin, is that these photos are really being used. So, um, you know, Office for Low Emission Vehicles have used some in their uh, schools campaign. So they're really encouraging school children to design um, on-street charging points, which I think is amazing. So they've used some of the images. So it's really nice to see that there, you know, there is a need for this kind of thing. And I'm using it in a lot of my project work as well, you know. So um, it's brightening up a few otherwise rather dull powerpoints i hope yes 
If you need to ever do artwork for a PowerPoint in the office, again, don't right click on the internet and download something that you didn't take. Even then you can get in trouble, I know nobody would find out, but EV Clicks, if you're on Twitter, at EV Clicks, it's a really fascinating resource to have. Are you gonna make it discoverable, or is it discoverable in a way already that I don't know about? I do have a website for it, so right. I, I realize really, really quickly, Martin, that trawling through a Twitter feed, not ideal. Yeah. So I've set up evclicks.co.uk as a website. Um, there's a bit of a blog thing going on there as well. Um, but yeah, all the images are on that website. Uh, there's a library there and you can easily, readily download them. And one of the great things is, Martin, that people are donating. So that's the term that, that, that we use with it. You know, I'm asking people to donate their images. So I think people are being generous. And please, if you're out and about as well, um, whether you're charging or just parked up or somebody can take a photo of you driving an EV, then please do send it in to at EV Clicks. In terms of having a bunch of photos, do you have to go through and kind of tag them like charging and driving or chatamo? Do you know what? I'd love to do that. Um, and when I, perhaps if I, um, I have a full-time job, I have two children, yeah. and uh, so I do this in my free time, but I would love to be able to find some time at some point, yeah, to, to go through all those images and to start to categorise them and tag them. One day I will do that. Is that something that the community could get involved in? Like, could, could, could we open source that? I think that is an absolutely amazing <laughs> idea, actually, Martin. So, yeah, if anybody's interested, please give me a shout. And do you know what? And I have thought that it would be a really nice exercise for a student to do as a bit of work experience. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's so fascinating, super interesting. In your life, like I say, not that you have any free time uh, being a mum and, uh, and having a full-time job. With your work hat on, you do insanely clever things with data around energy and... Before I bought an electric car, I knew what, I had smart meters. I knew what a kilowatt hour was, but it was a pretty casual look at the smart meter a couple of times a week and probably turning the lights off because I'm stingy. There is so much that can be done on the, on the level of scale that you do on a national level with billions of data points. What do you think the future holds? I really do think, and please don't cringe when I say this, but I think data is the new gold, literally. Um, I work for a company called Electrolink, and we are the UK's energy market data hub. We've been going for over 20 years now, and we run something called the Data Transfer Service that essentially facilitates all the data flows between all the energy suppliers, all the distribution network operators across the UK. For the last couple of years, we've had the governance in place such that we can now store, extract, analyze, use that data and actually offer that data up to others to innovate with. Um, so just to give you an example of that data set, we have the entire switching history of the UK. We have the entire consumption history of the UK and also almost 100% view of all the embedded generation on the network. But how can we use this massive treasure trove of data really to support um, the future of a smarter, more flexible energy system? Because that's what we're, we're looking to do essentially at Electrolink. So we've just done a project uh, with Western Power Distribution, with IBM, and we've taken our energy consumption data, um, combined it with other data sets, but analyzed it such that we've looked at the changes in energy consumption patterns going back across six years. So it's an immense amount of, of energy market data we're looking at. And we've been able to spot where EVs are being charged on the low voltage network. So that's you know, at household level, also solar panels. The reason that this is so, so important is that actually distribution network operators and others in this area have very poor visibility of what's connected at, at the very, very local level. So as electric vehicle uptake increases, it's essential that network operators and others know what's actually happening on, you know, all this new demand, all this new generation, so that they can plan effectively and ultimately if they can plan effectively for the uptake of these brilliant, brilliant new technologies, then the savings come back to the customers. 
and yet no one really knows the answers yet so you are working at such an exciting time because your job is kind of full of more questions than answers maybe yeah I think you're right Martin and what's exciting for me about working for Electrolink is that we are just at the we're at the start of this so we have this you know I've said it before treasure trove of energy market data we've got our energy market data hub which is an open and inviting platform for innovation we're already working with IBM we want to work with many 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 other um, small large businesses um, innovators to, to see how we can use this data to benefit, um, you know, actually everybody. How do we use all of this, these data points, in a way that it makes their life, like getting up in the morning and making a cup of tea, not now I need to think about my energy usage? Yeah, and I think, I think it's technologies like the OMI intelligent charging cable, you know, I've been beta testing it since yeah. February. And this is really, really clever and it's so, so simple. So I'm not a, I'm not a geek. Um, I, you know, when I look a graph at a graph or a spreadsheet, it, it doesn't jump out to me as it does with other people. But I love the fact with, te with technology like OMI, which is connecting to, you know, Octopus Energy and can connect to others, um, ultimately it connects to the distribution network as well. As a customer, it's straightforward. All I need to do is take a few minutes when I get it to schedule my charging for my electric vehicle. I've got a Nissan Leaf, so that in a, on a weekday, my car is charged by uh, to 80% every morning at seven o'clock. Weekend, it charges to 100%. I can prioritize to charge when it's greenest or when it's cheapest or to optimize my battery life. I can override the charging when I need to, if I need to go out um, unexpectedly. So I think we're going to see more and more technology that's very, very customer friendly, very easy to use, but works in parity with our energy supply, with the grid. And it just makes, you know, it all comes together and makes sense. That's one of the things about the OMI cable, that it, if you want to just use it and plug it in, it'll work and then if you want to go into the app and get really granular it'll just work so you want a few people in the in the country that have been that have been trying trying this out pretty seamless experience so far it seems yeah yeah i love it to be fair um and i love the fact that my children who are five and nine they can plug in they yeah. can take it out the car i'm never going to ask i would never have asked them to do that at a petrol station no. it's probably no. not legal apart no. from anything else but um it, it's so straightforward and what i do love in particular is when it's windy um at night i can check my app my omi app and i can see that i'm charging for two pence a mile you know and how fantastic is that you know, electric vehicles are cheap to run. My neighbour the other day said, but Jill, surely it costs a lot in electricity. And I'm like, well, no, not really. And well, not at all. And plus, I don't have to put any fuel in it. Yeah. You know, it, for me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. How do you think it will work when we get to... I have a driveway and I park off-road. So it makes having an EV easy. When we lived in London, we parked on street. And before that, when we were younger, we lived in apartments. How do we solve that issue? Because you park on your driveway overnight, but there's a lot of people that can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a really big challenge. It's also an area that's really ripe for innovation, which is absolutely fantastic. I mentioned earlier, government's just put out a, uh, a competition for children to design the future uh, on-street charging point which is brilliant, but also there's really exciting new technology coming along imminently. Um, there's connected curb that I've been talking to here at Fully Charged Live today. There's also um, Urban Electric as well that they're gonna launch soon. And these are very discreet, bespoke um, on-street charging infrastructure. Um, and I know that the network operators need to see these kind of technologies come along as well, as do customers at the end of the day, as do um, EV drivers at the end of the day. So yeah, I think it's very much a case of watch this space. Um, probably we don't have all the answers yet, but I think there are some really exciting and also very future-proof technologies that are on the horizon. Finally, on the subject of the next generation, we were looking after our goddaughter the other week and she had the iPad out and she was watching 0 to 60 Tesla reaction times. This appears to be a sub 
thing on YouTube. There is a collection of, and I've seen them, but I didn't realize it was a thing. There's actually a, a strand of, you know, oh, I took my grandmother for a 0 to 60 in a P100 DL, and this is what she did. And she's 11. She's not. A, she's not a tomboy little girl, but she was just like cackling away at these reaction videos. Firstly, your kids will never learn to drive anything but an EV, but they're sort of interested in it in a way that, like, I wasn't growing up. It's really interesting. Like, the next generation is really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And my, my two um, children, whenever we're in the car, we, we go EV spotting. Right. So I, I always get overexcited when I see an electric car, but, you know, so do they. Um, and uh, and my, you know, we built, um, we built my daughter her own electric car recently out of a cardboard box. But, you know, she's made up her own electric car song, uh, everything like this. So it's really kind of, it, 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 it is the norm for my children and it will become the norm, um, you know, for their generation per se, you know. Yeah. Air pollution is responsible for 40,000 early deaths every year in the UK. So zero tailpipe emissions has got to be a good thing, you know, n and no more idling your engine outside school gates, things, you know, you know, it's things like that. So, and I will collar anybody and talk to them about EVs if they'll listen to me. Um, but I think that's something that, you know, not to be evangelical about it, but essentially, it, you know, cleaner air is, is healthier for us all. And that's a really, really, um, you know, big thing about moving to electric isn't it yeah. awesome thank you so much thank you martin as always a fascinating insight on a saturday into the minds of people who are thinking long and hard about the issues surrounding the move to clean green sustainable electric transport and a couple of things there not only jill's passion project with ev clicks but also what she does as a, as a job as well really fascinates me how can we use all of those data points how can we learn more about how we use electricity in order to travel and maintain that freedom that the motor car that mobility has given us but do it in a way that is sustainable and actually isn't harming the planet fascinating stuff if you want to follow jill you can online of course by now i'm sure that you've grabbed your phone or your computer and you are following ev clicks already and if you'd like to follow jill on twitter it's at jill with a g g i w -L, l underscore noel n o w e l l thank you for her time and it was always lovely to catch up with many people actually at fully charged live a few weeks ago got some more saturday specials to bring you over the forthcoming weeks of people that i spoke to at that event a quick mention of our question of the week this week. Keep your comments coming in on email and YouTube. Should all chargers be open to everyone, or is it okay to have walled gardens? Let me know your thoughts. Well, thank you very much to our premium partners of the show, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology. I'll give a little mention for everyone else, by the way. Everyone else. I'll give a little mention for everyone else, by the way, on Sunday's show, when we'll read out your answers to question of the week and set a brand new question. That will be coming uh, for Sunday's edition. In the meantime, if you want to get any of the previous shows, most of them are news shows, but a fair few interviews in the, in the archive now as well. Speaking to some fascinating people recently, one of the most recent was Ryan Morn from Avid Technology one of our most recent supporters of the podcast as well on what they're doing at Avid Technology to support the move to electrification. You can go to the blog evnewsdaily.com and use the search bar to find things that might be on the topic of something that you are interested in or curious about. If you would like to leave a little review for this podcast, that would be amazing. I think the, like, the main thing is Apple iTunes. That seems to be the the main place that people leave reviews and it really helps because people see your review and then they, if it's you know hopefully complimentary they might try the podcast and we spread the word a little bit more come and say hi on socials by searching ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid <laughs>